uh, bringing in Diane Swank. She's chief economist at KPMG. Diane, it's great to see you. And probably the most important thing to highlight is that in the language Steve gave us, he used the phrase a few to describe uh, those who maybe wanted bigger rate hikes, uh, the more hawk. So the upgrade, the more hawkish read would have been if we used the word some, and we didn't get there. Um, that said, the market has still turned negative. So that tells us there's, there's not as much in the tone here that maybe the doves were, were hoping for. Exactly. And I think, you know, we did see after this, we know, as Steve already pointed out, Master and Bullard had said they wanted 50 basis point hikes. There was more than just them. I would expect Waller to be on that list as well. But I think what's really important is what's happened since then and how do we interpret where they were thinking about things then versus where they are today. And clearly, the biggest issue that Steve highlighted is the trajectory on inflation has proven stickier. And growth has come in much stronger than they were expected. They were looking for this sort of nice, cushy, soft landing with the economy slowing down below trend. And we've gotten the exact opposite in the data so far. And that's really going to put give an upper hand to those people who were hoping to go that 50 basis points at the meeting in March. And do you suspect that that this increases the likelihood that it's going to be a half point rise in March? And what does that say about either the consistency of Fed policy or about the Fed itself? In other words, does it does it reinforce confidence? Does it cause concern about the confidence in the Fed that investors should have? It's a great question. And I think, one, I think it's because of the data that we've gotten and the Fed says it's data driven. The data's changed. And so they're responding to the change in the data. And that is, it's now confirmed that instead of being able to go slowly, they have to go a little more aggressively. And frankly, to keep financial conditions tight and to keep from getting this sort of lost in translation, Powell mm -hmm. stayed to the script, but you can see sort of, you know, his tenor of his comments were a little less. We saw that rally during his press conference where financial conditions actually eased. The Fed can't afford that now. The stakes are much higher than they were when they had this meeting. You know why they felt confident then? The data's changed. They're responding to it. That's credible. You know, we're fortunate, Steve, that we will get another jobs report. So there's been a lot of questions about the January data and, and whether it's a head fake on warmer weather and not or not. And like you said, you had the nominal spending stuff yesterday. We know it's you know, maybe it's not. My point is February being a shorter month. The meeting is later in March than you would think. It's March 21 and 22. So we're going to get the jobs report. Obviously, we'll get ISM. We might even get into some of the inflation numbers. We might even get retail sales before then. So they will have a chance, hopefully, uh, if they were going to overreact, not to do so in, in response to just one month's data. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to disagree with Di Diane, with the proviso saying that what she's saying is perfectly plausible. And it really becomes a debate about what the default of the Federal Reserve is here. I'm going to throw out that I think the default is 25 basis points, and I still think it's 25 basis points, and I have a little bit of backup when I look at the market percentage probability of a 25, which is still, after we now know the word is a few, it's still 85 percent. So I'm backed up by that, and I think I need to throw out here the question, Kelly, or start thinking to myself, is what would it take to jar the majority of the opinion to go from a few to many to most to all? to a 50 basis point hike. And I think it would be another outsize inflation report, maybe or maybe not another outside jobs report. But if that outsized job report came with strong wage gains again, then perhaps we'd be back on the road to 50. I am going to say right now, I still think it's a 25 because I think that's the default of the Federal Reserve. When I read these minutes, I say, what do we want to do? We want to move by 25s and assess the, the outcome uh, of our prior hikes here, I still think that's where the Fed is right now.